my name is Dama Lisani and I welcome you to this episode of the Ideation Corner. The Ideation Corner is a space where ideas are discussed and dissected. And today I host Stephen Obelli someday, who is the CEO and the co-founder of Quelido Shop, and he's going to tell us all about it. Stephen, you're very welcome. Thanks, Namali. Um, it's, been, it's been a long time since I wanted to be at the Ideation Corner, and I'm happy that I'm finally here. I'm, I'm glad. You were telling me that you've been following it for a while now. Yeah, I think about two years. <laughs> <laughs> it's good I'm finally here. Yeah, happy yeah. to have you. So t- tell us about Quelly.shop. So Quelly.shop is um, a place that is called Genuine. Um, in some languages, Quelly means real. Mm-hmm. In other languages, it's like a question, you know, like, really? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, like Quelly. Quelly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly that. So, um, Quelly.shop primarily does two things. We make genuine appliances and electronics conveniently accessible to households and businesses across Uganda. Our hope is that we'll be able to scale this across Africa. Um, the other thing that Quelly.shop does is to make genuine appliance repairs and installations conveniently accessible to households and businesses across Uganda mm-hmm. as well. So basically that is what uh, Quelly.shop mm-hmm. is. So why, why did you decide to start Quelly.shop? What got you to this point? Um, Quelly.shop started out of a personal need. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I, I was at a low, I had been through a low moment in my life. I had been, I had lost everything that I had from a previous business failure. So I get back to my brother's, my brother's house. And, you know, after recovering and I, I want to, to again, get out and reestablish myself, I needed appliances and furnishing for my new house. Hey, when you your own things. Yes. <laughs> okay. You know, so I wanted to step out, but but now I needed these things and I didn't know where to get them. The work I was doing at that time was was um, would, would, would require me to be at work for so many hours in the day, you know. I would get to work at 8 a.m. and typically leave at 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. By the time I have left, most supermarkets are closed, the furniture people are not there. I, I, I cannot take a break during the day to go downtown and try figuring out is it genuine, is it not genuine, mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So I thought about it and with the experience that I had, I said maybe I could do something. Um, one experience that I do not forget mm-hmm. is that I wanted to get a flat iron, mm-hmm. a genuine one. Yeah. So I asked at home, I asked where can I get a genuine flat iron Mm. people gave me ideas and i was like well i do not have time anyway um can someone help so my brother said give me the money i'll I'll try to get it for you yeah as i'm coming from work so i gave him the money he went to he went to about three supermarkets around nakawa Mm -hmm. and called me and said you know what i haven't got anything they're not genuine I haven't got genuine flat irons that fit in this money. Mm. The, the, there are some that I've seen that are too expensive and the others that are within this price range, mm. no, I am not sure about them. Mm. You know, so he did that trip another time to before he got me something. Yeah. And within two years, it broke down and it was from one of the mm. biggest supermarkets in Kampala. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So th- those kind of challenges got me wanting to find a place where people like me, mm. little time um, and having the need, can confidently go and do their shopping mm-hmm. without having to sacrifice the work, the time that they should be spending doing the work that, that, that gives them money, okay. that pays them. We, you were talking, you said Quill is about genuine stuff. Yes. And there's a lot of counterfeit stuff, or, or okay, poor quality things. Yeah. But they're packaged so well, you would think it's an original, it's a legitimate, high quality product with this manufacturer. Yeah. So how do you ensure that the products you have, mostly because you mostly have electronics, how do you ensure that they are good, they are what you say, genuine? Okay. So when it comes to counterfeit, one, um, one thing that's common about most of them is the source. If you want to avoid buying counterfeits, if you want to dodge them, 
just do not buy from the wrong places. So we make sure that we are getting our products from the right sources. We only source appliances and electronics directly from the manufacturers or their official certified distributors mm -hmm. in Uganda. Okay. Yes, and then other things that I may not that I may not say on air now mm -hmm. because I know um, it, it makes the other about ten percent of what we do to make sure that that our customers not get counterfeits. I do not want to mention them you now mention because them. <laughs> you know they are loopholes that might be used to okay. to, to, to 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 spoil what we deliver what to our doing? customers. Okay. Yeah. So um, and why why did you focus? Why are you focusing currently? Could you say clearly it's genuine? Why, why are you focusing or why did you start with electronics? Okay, so a, a couple of things. Number one, if you buy an electronics item that is counterfeit, there are lots of other uh, risks that are involved in it. For example, if you buy, if you buy a kettle mm -hmm. and it's counterfeit, you, the kettle will break down so soon. That is number one. When it breaks down, where does it go? You dispose of it. You dispose it or off. You, you go, throw it away. Or you can call a guy who knows how to repair that. Okay. <laughs> so for your information, if it's counterfeit, yeah. in many cases, it's not repairable. Oh. I didn't know that. Yeah. Counterfeit headsets can't be repaired. Counterfeit why can't they kettles be can't be repaired. Because they're meant to be used temporarily, so okay. they're made with... In fact, what makes them counterfeit for the big part yeah. is that they're made with the wrong materials. Mm. They're made with the wrong materials. Okay. All lower quantities mm. of, uh, of the right materials. Okay. So they break down quickly. Very easy. So when they break down, you're going to throw them away. Mm. They'll go in the land landfills. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, not, that, that's something that's not going to no longer going to affect only you. It will affect everyone in the community, mm -hmm. everyone in the country. Mm -hmm. And you know, like that, that's number one. Number two is that appliance electronics are long-term investments. Mm -hmm. They cost quite an amount of money. So if you are to buy one which is not genuine, you start to lose way more money mm -hmm. than you would lose if you had bought a plate that is, that is counterfeit. Mm -hmm. Do you know there are glasses that are counterfeit downtown? You know, so if, if you break a, yeah, if you break a glass of 10,000 mm. and it's counterfeit, mm. you've lost 10,000 and maybe the transport that you spent mm. um, so to go and buy the glass. Yeah. But if you lose a fridge of 2 million shillings because you bought a counterfeit, counterfeit you've lost 2 million. And within a year it's broken down and it can't be repaired. You get it? Okay. Yeah, so um, those are two reasons. The other mm. is that it's easier mm to sort out counterfeit appliances and electronics mm. than to sort out counterfeit products from other several other categories. Mm. For example, when it comes to local furniture, mm -hmm. you know, the standard is is almost not there. Mm. Everyone has their own standard. You look at it with your eyes and you tell that well yeah, maybe see. this. You know? <laughs> but but the paint the the the, the, uh, the makers and, and sellers of those products they've They've made very bad use, I want to call it very bad use of, of paint, mm. that they can paint two different um, materials of wood. Yeah. To make it look the same. To make them look the same. That's possible? So, yes. They can tell you this is a movule <laughs> table yes. when it's not a movule table. When it isn't. But how will you know? You know? Most customers yeah, cannot know what tell. Would look like. uh, exactly. So I'd have to take their word. Yeah. So <laughs> um, what they do is that if you over bargain, yeah. then they'll give you the weaker one. Oh, if I insist, I want movule, but at this price. Yeah, and they'll accept. And you know, again, now for, for customers, it's it's um, customers are in most cases so vulnerable, mm -hmm. and that's again another reason why I thought they need a safe place to do their shopping. As a customer, you want a good kettle, a good TV stand, a good phone, a good, you know? Mm. Really, you do not know how to exactly tell. Mm. Yeah? Which one is. Generally. Yes. Yeah. So if, if you go to a place, if you know that, you know, I can trust maybe this business, mm. quite, or even, it can even be a shopping center. Mm. You know that in that place, they do not sell counterfeits. counterfeits. Yeah. In this place, 
they sell counterfeits. Mm. Now you would go to the place that is safer. Yeah. Because the, 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 the best thing that you can do in most cases is to trust the seller. Yeah. Yeah? Because yourself, you really, you, you do not know, even for the phones, mm. you're just buying the phone because you think if you buy from that shop. In fact, sometimes they say, I know a guy who only sells genuine phones. Exactly. You know? So you buy from that guy, but you still don't know if the phone is genuine. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so customers are very vulnerable. You'll go to the furniture shop mm. and you just want, you know, a good TV stand. Mm. The materials you don't know. Mm. You'll ask them, is this durable? They say yes. Is it For, genuine? Like, is, yes. It genu- is it genuine? Yes. For how long can it last? They tell you three years or four years or things like that. But it is them that know about the materials. Mm. Did you get it? Yeah. Yeah, so customers can only do so much. Before we came here, you told me that uh, you also have, it's beyond, I can go online, click, I want that product, that electronic product, mm. but then you also deliver and install and what other services do you provide? Okay. So we offer deliveries to more than 580 towns across Uganda. you national? Yes. Oh, I thought you were only around campus. No, we've, okay. we've delivered actually as far as South Sudan and as far as... Really? Yes. And as you far got as orders as from South Sudan? Yes. And they paid in advance. <laughs> okay, of course they should. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's it, far. It, it, it comes back down to the issue of trust. Okay. If, if, um, if the people trust you, mm. they're definitely going to give you their money. And they trusted you. Yeah, they trusted us and more still trusting us. Okay. So, we offer deliveries to 580 towns. Mm-hmm. To 14 of those towns, deliveries are completely free. Mm-hmm. The cost is on us. Um, to four of those towns, of those districts, installation is as well free. Mm-hmm. Um, we are trying to expand the free installation bit to other towns like Jinja, Masaka. We've already done it anyway in, in those, those districts, but officially mm-hmm. it is Kampala, Wakiswa, and Mukono okay. for the free installation. So, um, why do we do that? We realized that many people get issues with appliances because of poor installation and poor use Mm -hmm. so we get it that first thing that you need to do is to make sure you install it right second thing is use it right Mm. if it's a fridge it shouldn't be used immediately it's delivered it shouldn't be connected to power and turned on immediately it's delivered Mm. you should allow some time to pass for the um liquid in the compressor to settle before you use it before you can use it okay. you should connect it to a surge protector you know so when we do these deliveries we at least help customers with that now that particular bit is not installation but at least we help customers to make sure they do not make such the basic mistakes, mistakes. Yeah. when it comes to appliances like washing machines you got to in- install it really well mm. recently someone came to us and said he wanted um uh, his washing machine repaired because it vibrates mm. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mine does that too. Oh, Is that a problem? Good. We got business. I, I thought I thought but business. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now that is typically caused by uh, poor installation. Okay. Um, in is your washing machine a front loader? What do you mean? Do you load from the front or it from? It has up? a little door on the. S- on yeah, the side. front, yes. Yes, so that's a front loader. Yes. So those machines come, come with something called transit bolts. Mm-hmm. First, they have to be removed. Yeah. And then secondly, the washing machine should be balanced. The floor may not be leveled, mm-hmm. but the machines come with, with, uh, with legs. Okay. They're called legs and they're adjustable. So the wing doesn't have legs. <laughs> It's, okay, legs, it's sitting right on the floor. Okay, I'm not going to ask where you bought it from. There are no legs. <laughs> <laughs> no, there are no legs. It's, it's just flat. I'm, I'm coming suspicious. No, are the legs supposed to be separate from the machine or they come, they're part of the machine? They, they are installed, them. they are mounted on the machine, but they are delivered together with the machine. So the manufacturers provide them. Oh, so I didn't get legs. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so the and, machine... And I don't have a surge protector for the washing machine. Okay. We got, we got business. <laughs> we got business. So the machine just got to be leveled mm-hmm. and um, 
and and the the transit bolts that hold that hold the drum mm. during transportation they got to be removed just that and you're good mm. you don't need additional rubber or whatever to make the machine to to to, to be stable and, and not over vibrate mm -hmm. or not vibrate at all okay. you do not need those things mm. so not installing your machine right can make the machine to get spoiled quickly mm -hmm. so we decided that what we're going to do is to sell them genuine and make sure they use it right mm -hmm. same with cookers same with built-in ovens same with dishwashers mm -hmm. recently our technician was called by our customer mm -hmm. he went and found that after installing the, the dishwasher mm -hmm. the customer's plumber connected water from the sink mm -hmm. to pass through the dishwasher mm -hmm. so in after two weeks, the dishwasher was smelling and she was wondering, Oh, because what's the, wrong? the dirt from the sink is yeah. going into the dishwasher. He went and found water from the sink had been connected to pass through the dishwasher. The dishwasher. So imagine by how many years the lifespan of that dishwasher was going to be cut. Mm, because of that. Because of that. Yes. Yeah, so we are really trying to make sure that people get the full value of, of, of the appliances that they buy. So if I buy mm. a dishwasher or a washing machine from you, mm -hmm. you would say, oh, at least an amount, Kampala works in Kono. It will be delivered, it will be installed, and I would also be told how to use it. Yes, you get a demo. In fact, for some of the, for, for some of the products, some of the washing machines come with free washing machine detergent as well. Okay. I know they always come with these manuals. I people never read. I never read manuals. Yeah. Mm. And um we are we are now working on demo videos so okay. that we are able to to offer this at scale. Mm. Other people even if they haven't bought from us, mm. it helps us how. if they know and use the appliances that they bought from anywhere mm. the right way. Okay. Yeah. Now like my dishwasher that doesn't have legs. <laughs> washing machine. Oh, sorry, my washing machine that doesn't have legs that mm. I've been told needs legs. Mm. Uh, I didn't buy it from you guys, mm. but if I had a problem with it, I can call you guys for maintenance. Really good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and how do I get the service? How do I access it? Okay, so you can go on our website or mobile app. Mm -hmm. There's a quick button for the installation services we call it service center section mm -hmm. so you go on there and then you book and give details of what you want to be done uh, we find that many people want their installation and repair services done on saturday mm -hmm. or sunday when they when are at home. home yeah yeah so from from that um, part of our website and app you can simply book and and um, and have a technician come and help you then um, you can as well call us mm -hmm. or send a message on WhatsApp. We have a WhatsApp business number. I don't know if I can mm -hmm. read it. Of course. Yeah, <laughs> the number is 0754-559895. You can send a WhatsApp or you can call us and then say that you need a technician. Then we would send a technician to you. Okay, and that's it and then I'll use your services. That's it, okay, good. Okay. Yeah. Um, when we were talking earlier, I talked about the fact that, okay, fine, you have these electronic products, which is fine, and they're all imported because we don't do electronics in Uganda. Mm. But for the products that we do in Uganda, mm. like furniture, okay, you've talked about furniture. Yeah. It's very hard to track the standard. Mm. But are there any Ugandan products that you're thinking of putting on the platform? Yeah, we're, we're thinking of lots of, in fact, anything and everything that you need for your home mm. anything and everything that you need for your home but number one it got to be genuine and of good quality for appliances mm. our minimum warranty period is 12 months so if it be genuine and you and the manufacturer can only offer six months warranty or nine months or ten months we don't Good. deal okay so um we, we are looking at several segments of um several product segments most of which are locally made. Mm -hmm. um, we are looking at at furniture now, like TV stands. These are things that our customers need. Sofa sets, you know. So we are working to see that we get the right suppliers, and we have ways of determining the right quality, so that we can um, provide those products as well to our customers. 
our hope is that in the next six to 12 months, mm -hmm. we will have about three, four other major product categories mm -hmm. on the platform. Ugandan? Yeah. <laughs> so if, if, if hypothetically I am a Ugandan manufacturer who is producing a certain product here mm. in Uganda mm. and I listening to your to your discussion mm. and I said you know what I would love to partner with Quilly or I'd like my product to go on Quilly mm. what process would I have to follow to do that okay number one you get to us mm -hmm. you can still call us on the same number and then you will be guided but mm -hmm. before you do that just so you know the things that you have to be very very mindful about is that we need quality assurance we will most certainly ask you mm -hmm. to provide us your UNBS certification mm -hmm. for whatever product category that you bring. Many people do not have that and it's, it, it, it makes it quite challenging. Yeah, but that, that's something that we will ask for. If it is furniture, for example, nobody buys a TV stand to use for six months. No, yeah, it's supposed to last as long as the TV. <laughs> so before you come mm. have it in mind that we will ask for not less than 12 months warranty mm. when you go to a random shop um at the roadside to buy to buy a tv stand or a sofa set they'll just sell to you and say take our word yeah this is good yeah <laughs> but not 12 months if warranty. you ever see it on quelly mm. it will come with warranty if it breaks you will have it repaired or replaced mm. If it breaks, you will have it repaired or replaced okay. by Quelly. Yeah, so those are some of the pieces that we are still trying to put together. Yeah. So if you have products and you think that they are really good and you think that they should be on Quelly, you reach out to us and we start talking. Mm. Um, you provide us uh, the quality assurance details, which of course will include the UNBS uh, certification. Mm -hmm. And then we check out the products and we take it from there. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm thinking there, there are a lot of, um, I interview quite a lot of people who are doing, you know, processed or packaged agri products. Mm. Those are things that you could sell there. Like mm. you could sell high quality honey that someone has UNBS certification on. Yeah. Uh, or high quality, you know, uh, I don't know. These, these are creative who was doing these beautiful baskets. Mm. I don't know. Does UNBS have a certificate for like baskets and those arts and crafts things? That for some, I think they have especially these ones that get that get exported. Mm. They already have. If you bring something that's entirely new, mm. then they start working on it and they they they, they have certification for it. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Mm. So tell me, which which locations are you mostly selling the Quelly products or wait, wait, that you supplying? Wow. Okay. So, um, upcoming residential areas. Mm. In Kampala, for example, we have in, in Kampala, in the eastern part of Kampala Metro, mm -hmm. uh, Jera, Bulindo, Chira. Where, where people are constructing. Those are our places <laughs> where people are just constructing, but just getting into new houses. Yeah. Usually people do not want to move into new houses mm. with old appliances old and furniture. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so those are really our customers. Yeah. And then up country, up country places like Mbale. Mm. Mbarara, Masaka, Ginger, you know, those places where we are doing very well in, in those places. I'm surprised you deliver that far, actually. We do. But I'm also happy that you've delivered in South Sudan. Yeah. Because I was in South Sudan like a month ago <laughs> and, and they are constructing everything. At least I was in Juba and mm. everything is everywhere. There's a construction taking place. Yeah. So We hope to, to do more. Okay, so what if, if someone wanted to learn from you, you're mm. young, you're an entrepreneur, what lessons would you give them that you've learned over your time as an entrepreneur? <laughs> um, the lessons are many, mm. but number one, be patient. Mm. Be very, very patient. If you're not, be ready to be patient. Number two, ask. I mean, always ask questions. I'm here with Damali today and, and I'm thinking how much time can she give me to ask her questions? There's no reason why you should make the mistakes that other people have made. Many of my friends know that when, when you are my friend and you are a professional or highly skilled in anything, I'm going to consult you on so many things. If you're an accountant, 
we have an accountant but you're also going to be my accountant if you're a brand guy definitely we're going to have to talk if you're a journalist man so try to get as much as you can from the people that are around you so that you do not make mistakes that other people have already made number three is that you do not have to be the very best at everything allow others to also to also support in areas where they can where they can support you're not the champion in everything there's a lesson i got from from um from my best man before I, before I, before my my wedding last year he said steven you're getting married but make sure you are not everything in the house <laughs> let your wife be relevant so i said okay when i get married i don't know how to cook unless i must okay because you're not trying to interfere there and then you think you're a champion of everything you spoil everything and at the end of the day you get burdened and no business can really go far when when um there's one person who's trying to dominate in every single uh, bit of it number four is that always do marketing no matter where you are you should always do marketing our uh, to to get to get our first a uh, 100 million shillings in sales we have to get orders from friends family pastors the people that knew me had to know about Kweli i didn't have a marketing budget you know and i would deliver myself and when i deliver if i delivered said to 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 my pastor i would i would ask him how do you find it if i delivered to a stranger our very first customer was a stranger i asked george how did you get Kweli and then he said how is doing a google search and then i found you I asked him so why did you buy from us I literally interrogated him he said your price was better than the price of the other supplier and other and the other vendor and then I said okay um anything else he said because you said you would deliver you know so I knew where to improve which parts to, to put more effort in yeah those things so really always do market because that's where the money comes from the last point that I that I I want to mention is that the end of every sale is the beginning of the next one you should get as much as you can from your existing customers if someone buys from you a cooker for example now someone buys from us a cooker we make sure that they will buy from us a gas cylinder and they will get gas refill through us if not they should at least be able to get from us other appliances later on all people who buy from us cookers say the next thing that i want to buy is a washing machine so make sure that we are always in touch with them we use content we use several other uh, points of interaction to make sure that they are still within the fold that we do not lose them until the time when they are ready to buy the next item comes wow that's very thorough <laughs> thank you thanks <laughs> very very thorough. but um we are come to the end of our episode it's very short i know but uh do you have any last words that you would like to give where can people find you order the stuff your phone numbers all that other stuff wow okay so um you can find us on www.kweli.shop you can find us on the kweli.shop app it's on google play for now we should have the ios version sometime soon um you can find us at our Kampala offices which is plot 171 Tesatu Road Ntinda you can also find us through whatsapp um on plus 2567545598895 we are on almost all social media platforms we are on tiktok we are on facebook we are on instagram we are on twitter and yes we are on pinterest as well Yeah so you can find us in any of those places if you have questions you ask if you want to make an order for an item usually it's just a, a click away and that's it All right ladies and gentlemen there you had it if you need any genuine electronic appliances you can get in touch with Kweli thank you